most important thing when you're working with a director is communication and whether or not you even get on. And Sarah's a really wonderful person. Um, and she's very funny and very dry and very witty. She's an absolute delight to work with. She's in incredibly um, specific when she has to. And some of the scenes that we've had to do have been so um, detailed in, in a character who sort of is laughing one minute and crying the next and then cross with her husband and then worried about whether or not she's going to make it through the year. I think it's that classic husband and wife thing where sometimes you find yourself passing each other in the corridor and, um, you know, she's busy looking after the kids and he's busy working and they both think that they're working harder than the other one. You know, I think there's a lot of people who identify with the relationship because, and I don't even mean in, in terms of gender, I mean you can identify either way. Actors always talk about wanting to play roles that are really challenging and this is right up there with anything I've ever done ever. It's um, what's required of the role and also the actual amount of time on set um, means that it's a big, big job, which is all you long for as an actor. He's very honest to work with and when you look in his eyes you really feel like you're there and I don't take that for granted because you hope that's always the case when you're acting opposite someone, but it isn't always. I think the strength of this story is uh, Sarah's attention to detail and she's, uh, she, she's very uh, clever in the way that she can draw, you know, she can, she can create drama out of, uh, out of everyday um, uh, life. Ross is someone who um, is very content to, he's content just to cruise through life and he takes it very easy, he doesn't take anything too seriously. Um, he really loves his work, which is a sound recorder at a radio station, and he gets lost in, in his work. And uh, you know, he's quite happy to sit back and allow the family life and, and Natalie to kind of take control of that aspect. The story is entirely about the modern family. You know, I think that it's. Um, I think that anyone watching the film will recognise, if not themselves, then people very close to them. And I think that, I mean, that's, that's Sarah's strength as a, as a filmmaker, is, uh, is holding up that mirror to, to you know, who we are now and the way we live. For me, I'm, I, I flash back a lot when I'm on the set, especially with Jono, because he's exactly the same age I was when I started as an actor. So he's 14 and I was 14 when I began my professional career. So, you know, I, I can remember, I try and think about you know, things that older actors said to me that might have really annoyed me and I try not to do that. <laughs> and I try to just treat them as, as equals and, and um, have a good time. We're really lucky too with these two kids that they're, they seem very well adjusted. So, uh, so they seem to be, uh, you know, enjoying themselves and, and I enjoy being in their company. It's good fun. They're refreshing too. Look, the film, in a word, is human, just like you know, like look both ways, it's just human. It's, it's sweet, sour, um, complex, simple, funny, sad. You know, it's like it just completely moves between all of those things, you know, and because they're writing so good, it, it, it traverses all those things really confidently. Look, I'm just believe that the very best uh, colour palette approach is to have limited have a limited color palette because I think you just throw everything in in a great big heap all the time then it's just a big cacophonous mess. I really do prefer for the environment to give you the cues for lighting. I mean they'll tell you I'm in favor of shooting locations rather than studios because I think well the problem with studios are you can kind of make it anything. You can kind of put the walls where you want, you can take the wall away when you want and there's something weird when you put the camera in privileged places where you wouldn't normally go. So even though our main set here is very, very small, you know, because you need to work in with that space and the actors do also, you, when you see the rushes and ultimately, hopefully when you see the film, you will know that it's a real house and it really does, you know, that there's nothing breakaway about it. There's, you, can't, you can only put the camera where a person would stand. Just in one word, I just try and keep everything as simple. Uh, use the most naturalistic and simple lighting that I possibly can. Because the, the structure of the film is quite um, ordered and clear, there are 12, 
12 months or in fact 13 months through the story and each one has its own title <clears throat> and um, we wanted it to be reasonably episodic. We wanted the audience to understand that it's not just a, um, a direct narrative that goes from one scene to another, but that there are chapters. To a large extent, they are representing emotional states. Um, some of the colours, we just took our cue from what's in the world. For example, Christmas is predominantly green and red. Um, and also, because the film is largely about um, the materialism of our society. There's a lot of scenes in shopping malls and supermarkets and, and you know, that our characters are all influenced by the, those kind of aspirational values of our society and wanting to consume and so on. So, um, so those colours, uh, you know, are what, what's going on around them. We wanted them to be people that you felt you would know and, and would like. That was kind of a really important thing. So the comedy of the film doesn't come so much from jokes, but just from recognising and, and, um, and relating to the characters. I think the kind of eclectic collection of, of stuff um, reflect Natalie, particularly with there's a lot of attention, obviously, on colour, and there's, there is a bit of a riot of colours in the house. This family don't throw away things very much. <laughs> they just keep accumulating and accumulating until they could hardly fit in the house.